Hey, Britt, how's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing well. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, I get up pretty early, so uh, um, it, it's not it's not too terrible for me. I got up, uh, myself a workout in, and uh, get my kids some breakfast. So uh, life is good. And then my wife gets them off to school and oh, yeah. keep the train, keep the family train moving. You know. <laughs> awesome. Hey, you know, I don't meet a lot of people that like to work out in the morning. I do. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of rare that you find people that like to get up the crack of dawn. I, I love to get in the gym at six in the morning. And, you know, the funny thing is there's hardly anybody in there. You get, to, you get the place to yourself, at least over here. Yeah. And, and, and to me, I mean, you're busy like I am, man. I mean, I, I'm, I got I do I run our scrap yards and I've got two young kids at home. My wife is a working mom. She's a school teacher. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, like I said, it's, I say it's assholes and elbows all day, every day. It's just busy, <laughs> busy, go, go, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a kind of a, a little bit of quiet time for you, I guess. I don't see you tearing off, uh, leaving some at some late hour of the night when you're done at work and, and trying to get into the gym, right? I mean, that's family uh, time, right? No, I'm coming home to hang out, at least yeah. squeeze in whatever I can time-wise, you know? The good old-fashioned uh, – work-life balance which sometimes more work than life and sometimes more life than work but it just depends <laughs> on the week depends on the day depends on what's going on so it's just it, it varies absolutely well we could get started hey everyone uh, i want you guys to meet a friend of mine uh brett eckert uh is the ceo of united metals uh in uh idaho and uh, united metals recycling specifically and I'm uh, sorry, are you in Boise actually, or? Yeah, our, our uh, we have a, our our main non-ferrous processing facility is in Boise, Idaho. Um, my office is resides at our very original location in Caldwell, Idaho um, now. But for years, when we built that facility, my office was in Boise. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so so yeah. Speaking of that, just before we get into this, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about United Metals. In fact, that, that was kind of one that it maybe does lead to the first question. I'd love to hear a little bit about your history because I know you've got a very. We've talked a little bit about it, so maybe we just start right there. Uh, tell us a you little know, bit about your introduction to the scrap world, and and uh, tell us where what you a little bit about your history. Okay, I'm third. I'm a third generation um, in the scrap industry. My grandfather started it in uh, 1972. So I was kind of born into it, um, super humble beginnings, you know, just good old, old school scrapyard in uh, BFE, Idaho. Um, <laughs> just, you know, family business, you know, aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpa worked there when I was growing up. I grew up in the office with uh, watching Saturday cartoons with my grandparent, with my grandpa, because my everybody else was at work. So eventually I was old enough to... Uh, be able to work in the recycling center and kind of be able to handle the aluminum cans and whatever else, pay some customers. And I started cleaning brass. At that time, we didn't have an export market for insulated copper wire. So I, I as I got older, I, I became kind of the wire stripper. So we had the, you know, the wire stripper with the two rollers, the one with the wider spaces for your big MCM and then the smaller ones for your uh, THHN smaller wire. We stripped every everything. Um, everything was done by hand. You know, now it's fairly, fairly automated. We have some wire chopping lines, but uh, it was all manual, manual labor at that, at that point in the game. Um, and then, uh, so just graduated my, through, my way through, uh, through the yard. I'd done everything from run a cutting torch to, uh, to you name it. So hmm. I'd, I'd left to go to school, went to school, um, got my undergraduate degree in business, came back. Worked full time with, uh, by that time, my grandfather had retired. We were partners with Snitzer Steel. Um, we became partners in 97. So we were, you know, 50% owned by a publicly traded company. Um, my mom, my dad, and myself, you know, just went to work. At that time, 20 something employees had just started grinding, really grinding together, built, built the business. We added facilities. Um, I think we have today, we have eight. Eight yards, a couple auto salvages, um, and uh, I retired my parents in 2016. We bought Schnitzer, 
back out of the business. Okay. Uh, we became 100% family owned um, wow. again. And uh, here I am, man, just uh, awesome. doing what we do, you know? And you got, and you got, you have a hauling company as well, right? Or yeah, we have a trucking company. company. Yeah. yeah. I dressed up for the event, <laughs> but uh, our, our trucking company, we have, uh, we run our own trucks. We run um, inner, inner comp, basically what we call over the road trucks, which is our yeah. long haul stuff that hauls scrap outbound. And then we have internal trucks that are moving scrap into our yard. So we run you know, 40 something trucks, um, shuffling stuff in and out of, of the facilities. Now, now, you guys are, are well, I, I never really knew much about the lay of the land in Idaho. Uh, you know, I know that everything uh, past the continental divide, typically, if it's going to go export, it's going out to the West Coast, obviously. Correct. But, uh, what does that look like nowadays, like, say, in the last few years? I mean, what, what kind of materials do you got that are going export? Um, and, how, and then also logistically, how do you handle that? How, how does that work? How do you get So that? for us... The way the way it works for us is that we we have um, because we are we are fairly pretty far inland. I mean, it's yeah. tougher for us to get containers. So the way it works for us is, you know, we identify either transloaders or brokers on the uh, northwest coast. Um, sometimes, you know, down in California, the um, southern west coast. Mm -hmm. But uh, mostly for us, because it's it's beneficial for our trucks is we go to uh, Portland or Seattle, Tacoma okay. um, is the primary ports we use. Mm -hmm. So what we do, because our trucks and trailer combinations, we can haul um, 68,000 net. So we can go up to 105 gross. Okay. So what we do is we basically can ship three containers worth of material to the West Coast on two trucks, two truck loads. Okay. So basically 344s, right? So we'll mm -hmm. load those truck. We'll load our trailers up. You know, we'll put 66, 68,000 net. Ship them to the uh, ship them to the coast, and then basically that load will get broke down into three containers and uh, moved from there. So, right. and, and, and do you do you? Uh, so you're able to get that. So you get three containers worth in one load, or are you running like two. tandem? Okay. Yeah, we run. We get in two. So we get you know two trucks. Is, okay. Uh, you know, two sixty six to sixty eight thousand pound trucks. You know we're loading forty four thousand pound containers usually, unless we're uh, shipping batteries, and then the, those containers then can go to fifty five. So then that's right. one truck. And what and what kind of materials make sense uh, to to go that direction to go off uh, offshore basically? Export material for us right now is uh, irony stainless bales and boxes, um, batteries. Mm -hmm. um, we ship, uh, uh, like say, old sheet is a good export item for us right now. Um, loads easily, transloads easily. Okay. Um, we ship uh, alternator starters, mm -hmm. uh, mix electric motors, small electric motors, medium electric motors, transformers. All that stuff is material we're boxing and moving to the coast um, and moving through brokerage houses. So okay. I'm not dealing directly with the consumer um, in these in, in the other countries. I'm basically just dealing with brokers here in the United States that either have a transloading relationship right. on the West Coast, or some of them actually have their own transloading facilities. It's it just depends on the broker, depends on the situation. All right, and and yeah, you were you were uh, told me that uh, that indeed you work exclusively with traders or brokers. Uh, and, right. and, and you really love that, uh, relationship. And I'd, I'd like to learn more, like what, 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 I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, yards that would love to go direct, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot, I, I used to be a trader broker myself. So I know that the guys in the middle earn their fair share uh, the hard way. Well, yeah. What, what, how, how does that look from your side? How's it, what, how does it work for you? And, and you'd seen, I think you told me before, you're not super interested in going direct. So, Tell me why. You know, I, I don't have a big desire to go direct. A, because we don't do enough volume to move the needle for okay. of, of any one commodity. So I feel like there's, there's brokers out there that have certain commodities that they're very strong in because they have good consumers for those items. Whether, you're, whether it's alternators and starters and motors, whether, you know, it's an irony 
you know, dirty, you know, contaminated brass or batteries. I mean, there's certain items that people have very good homes for that are going to move enough volume that they could to command a better price and a better relationship than really I can ever command or get um, from where I'm from where I'm at. Right. Um, so that's one component of it for me. Um, the second component is the service. So what my preference is, is I'll take a, a cent or two less. So I'm not having to deal with the bookings. I'm not having to deal with the logistics side of getting the container moved in and out of the port and delivered to the consumer, go through the CCIC inspection or whatever inspection is depending mm -hmm. on the country. And basically there's that service component of what the broker provides that I value. Yeah. Um, I, I don't ever have any desire to be a broker. I don't have any desire to be a, uh, um, a buyer of, of material from other people's yards. So mm -hmm. I've always just been very strong at staying in my lane. Yeah. I pick my lane. I say, this is what I'm going to be good at. It's going yeah. to be buying, processing, and getting it to the port of delivery and then letting other people kind of take the ball and run with it and do their job and what they're good at, right? There's people yeah. out there that are excellent with the banking. They're excellent with the logistics and the containers and the shipping and finding the right consumer. And they have that, you know, they can speak four languages and they just have that, um, they just have that grease that I don't have it for that part of it, right? So yeah. I recognize that. And if I'll maybe adjust my buy price down a cent or two so that I can then pass that cent or two on to the, to the trader and let them go do their job. Um, it's kind of the, my concept, how I, how I look at it on my end. Awesome. Awesome, Brett. Um, so, so you're, you're working with these guys and, uh, and you're still moving quite a bit of volume uh, you know, off the West coast. It's maybe not moving the needle. I'm not sure in what reference to what, what you mean there, but, uh, but uh, as far as like, a, like, like, I don't move a hundred loads of batteries a month. Yeah, right? I got gotcha. <laughs> you. But you know what I mean? But there's might yeah. be the guy that as a broker, he accumulates all of these and, he has a pricing power to go move a hundred loads. I might move one or two. So he's going to be able to, or she's going to be able to facilitate that consumer relationship better than I ever will. Got it. Exactly. And then, and how, so over, over the years that you've been, that you've been uh, like closely involved in this part of the business. Um, tell me a little bit about like, how do you, how do you, I mean, of course, you know, nobody's perfect and, and uh, you know, uh, you, you run into some problems with, you know, I'm sure in the past with the trader or broker, it didn't work out. Is there, is there, um, yeah, I don't know. You seem to have pretty good luck, but are there some pretty, are there also some pretty bad stories in the mix as well? Or are you able to always just, have you just always had really great luck and you've always dealt with great traders and brokers and never had any huge <laughs> breakdowns, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you know, as well as I know that, uh, um, some of the best lessons in life are some of the most expensive ones, right? I and, that one. <laughs> and the ones that you've, uh, the ones that you've kind of ran into and you're like, okay, I'll, I won't do that one again. Um, I had a recent one on, uh, on Ferris, but, uh, which is more of a domestic company, but it's a lesson that I learned and it was expensive and I've, I've kind of worked my way through it. But as far as on the export side, you know, I've, I have had pretty good luck, but I vet our, our traders pretty, you know, deeply, right? And by vetting them, I mean I spend a lot of time talking to other traders. And and the the the, the best traders, the best brokers, in my opinion, are the ones that don't have a problem telling you who else is good, right? Because they know that they have a certain, you know, not everybody can handle every product and has a great home for every single item, right? So if I'm dealing with somebody on a certain item and I say, hey, I've got X, Y, Z amount of this, but I know you're maybe not super strong in sealed units. Who is a good sealed unit trader that's trustworthy? Who can I talk to? And that's kind of like the old school way of doing it, right? Like we were kind of talking about is it was yeah. all word of mouth. It was like trying to find someone you could trust and then letting them tell you who they could trust. And it was, it was very... Uh, a lengthy process, you know, and you really had to kind of develop that, you know, versus, you know, today where it's, it's so much more transparent or it can be so much more transparent. And 
you can actually that 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 information is kind of at the at the tip of your finger now versus before old school like when i was starting to sell 15 years ago 16 years ago i had to go out and look for those traders go out and look and go to Isery and shake a hundred people's hands and then go with my gut and hope that i i swung and hit you know and not, i didn't miss um and i think you know it's 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 been a process but it's it's i think that's one of those one of those things I've always valued about the right people is they're never afraid to tell you who's good in your industry, regardless of whether it's scrap or buying a used car. If you're good, people will tell you, go see that person. They're good. They're good at what they do. Right. And, and there's, a, there's a value to that to me. So, so yeah, so what you're describing there is basically, if, if I'm, what it sounds like to me here is that you don't really – like to work with people that kind of silo information or you prefer people that show that, that show their cards a little bit that are more open is that, is that yeah because i i feel transparency is when you're transparent across the board people want to do they want to do business with you um because they know that you're going to be they the, the right person knows that they're not the answer they're not the swiss army knife of everything i mean swiss army knife has a screw it has a knife it has a toothpick it has but it's not the best screwdriver. It's not the best knife. It's not the, I'm looking for the, the best knife, the best screwdriver, the best pair of pliers, right? Like, and, and that's not all in the same, you know, everybody's got their kind of wheelhouse. Right. And if, and if you, as long as you recognize that, um, then other people, and, and you're, you, then you're more willing to tell the next person, Hey, there's a better screwdriver over there. Like that's, that's the guy, that's the gal that's going to take care of you for that item. Go use them. They're trustworthy. They're good to go. And but you have to figure out who you you know before you said to figure out who you could trust to kind of find that information out for you. You know, um, yeah. but transparency wins in, in my book. Yeah, it, it saves us so much time. You know, and you know when I started uh, brokering first and then trading scrap, that was back in two thousand and four. So it's like uh, eighteen years ago, right? Seventeen years mm -hmm. ago, and. Um, and man, I tell you, it cost me, uh, well, I, I calculated at one point, like about $50,000 of mistakes to get to where I had a decent network. And essentially that was just trial and error. It's mm -hmm. just like you said, you go to a conference, you meet people, you look online, uh, you give a few people a shot, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you miss, sometimes it costs you, you know, a bunch of money and you move on. But at the end of that process, which is, which was the only way really that I could, you know, when I got into this thing, but at the end of that process, you paid a bunch of money and losses, but you've eliminated some people and you've still got in your group there, you know, a few people that you know are solid because you've done business with them time and time again already, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's a very expensive way to build up your network in this business, I would say. Absolutely, yes. So which is why for so many years, people guarded that those that information right i mean there's no there's no doubt in my mind i understand why that it because pe it took people years and it's, they spend a lot of money trial and error going through those tough lessons yeah. right so everybody was very guarded about who do you use i was just talking to my dad about this my dad hadn't been to some of our yards for a while I mean, he's retired and um and and i was just talking to him about this the other day we're driving down the road and he's like um and he goes, it's kind of crazy back in the day, like everything was so secretive of who you sold to, who are you dealing with? And, you know, who was buying your material? Who's buying your competitors down the road material? Because everybody wanted it to be their guy there, you know. And I looked at it more of, you know, as, as, as I kind of came up, I looked at it as um, I want to tell people who I'm dealing with because I want those people to be successful, Right. Because if you're successful, let's say you're my broker, you're my trader. Right. I want you to win business because I want you to I want you to make money, right? Because if you make money, now all of a sudden my bill isn't as hard to pay, right? So that's true. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get paid. I'm because you're you're making money, you're doing good, you're successful, you're finding better markets for the material. All of a sudden you can command a little bit better price because you're actually, you know, you've got a little you know, something that could move the needle a little farther, right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're winning. And if you're winning, you're going to remember who took care of you and who helped who helped uh, get you more business. Now all of a sudden you're winning, so I'm going to win more. 
And it's kind of that 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 circle awesome. that that everybody's looking for, right? Yeah. But the only way that that happens is if you actually promote the people that are doing good. And you know, that's the that's the that's where I'm that's what I'm trying to do. And I, that's kind of the my just kind of reverse engineered the way I think people should look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because, well, I mean, you're the way that you're running your business is 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 the way that uh, I think our industry would uh, would would well. I think that if, if everybody ran a business like you did, we would thrive as an industry. I feel like that you know that we need to uh, we need to think more about. How can we add value outside of just the contacts we have? You know, like it's, it's not just if all you got at the end of the day is just these secret contacts and that's all you got for business. And what are you doing in business? You know, like yeah. that's not it. There's a lot more service and value behind it. You know, like, like don't, don't, don't like try to harp, like keep that information in the silo, be more open, uh, definitely applaud and, 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 and let everybody know that you've got a great supplier. You've got a great buyer help them mm -hmm. out and also by the way i feel like that what happens as well is not only can they pay your bill as you said because they're doing better but it kind of in a way it kind of creates a sense of obligation that man you know uh, brett took care of me he helped me get this deal I and mean, that's that one up you know next time that you're like neck and neck with some some other supplier you, you're going to probably get the deal when the other guy won't right so it just just makes yeah sense. it's relationships right like one thing, the things, the, the scrap industry has evolved over a lot of years and things have changed. But one thing that still hasn't changed is it's super, it's a very relationship driven industry. Absolutely. Relationships are like the backbone of what we do. And I've always felt in a relationship, it's a 50 50 deal, right? right? I mean, my wife and I split a lot of the tasks, you know? Yeah. Sometimes she does the heavy lifting. Sometimes I do. But ultimately, the goal is to find that sweet spot of where you're both doing, you know, an equal amount of work and contributing an equal equal amount. And business is no different. Like, you know, I, I, I want the, I want our brokers, our traders to earn their money. I want them to go to market and go to market with our material and try and find the best home and get the best price. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no doubt about that. Like, I'm not going to let you off easy. But I'm also, if, if you do the job, I'm also going to make sure that I do my part and I tell people about you. Right. Yeah. And I think I was having dinner last night with a, with a trader. And, uh, and I said, you know, if you do somebody a good job, they'll tell like three people. Right. But if you treat somebody shitty, they're going to tell like a hundred. Yeah. What's the difference? Like if, if we could flip that deal and say, Hey, you know, tell this equal amount of people yeah. the same. If yeah. you do a shitty job, tell 50 people. If you do a good job, tell 50 people you know yeah. like if you could just do that i mean that's yeah. going to help a ton you know yeah and and also i think that you know because you know everybody at well, the statistic you know says that people are 10 times more likely to complain than they are to actually praise right and we're all guilty of this i mean in, in our personal lives you know like i get mm -hmm. these surveys from hotels from airbnb i'm you know my wife is actually this is quite ironic, but she was fussing at me in, in, on the car ride when we were in Italy uh, because I wasn't taking the time out to give to leave reviews on these places that we stayed in. You know, it's like, well, if you're going to complain one time, then you need to also leave good reviews as well. And I'm well, like, good for her. Yeah, that's my. I know yeah. the, the old, beautiful part of that is, it's like, you know, you call me out. That's my whole business over here, and I'm being lazy in my personal life. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, uh -huh. I think it's important, man. I think it's a, I think it's important. We we live in a different world nowadays, right? I mean, like the, without question, like information uh, is is much easier to obtain. There's more of it. Um, the times have changed, you know. Like the days that you're describing, what your what your what your dad was talking about. You know, um, you know, that, that reminds me of like the, the scrapyards that I still see this day with the huge walls outside because nobody wants you to know what they got inside and behind the walls, right? You're yeah. keeping secrets. But man, nowadays you've got drones, you've got satellites. You got, I mean, you can't really yeah. hide. You, it's just, but like time, as time goes by, there's going to be more and more transparency. And, and we have to figure out like what, if that's the new game, then what are the rules set in your game? And I think you've already stated part of it right here. You know, it's a matter, it's now like, we understand that people can see who people do business with. Why don't you start praising the people publicly that do a great job? They'll be looking at like, well, where's that seal of approval from Brett? I didn't hear that Brett was saying, you're so good. Why didn't Brett say you're awesome? <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah. And, 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 and you, and you have to actually go and encourage your, um encourage your your suppliers i mean if i was a trader i would spend 
an exponential amount of effort encouraging yeah. the people that I knew that I've done a good job for and I've, I've kept my word. I've done everything you've ever asked me to do to just give me a review, whether yeah. it's a review on Google, whether it's a review on TradeFox, whether it's a review, there's an email that I can, that I can kind of reproduce and put okay. out there and say, you know, from a legit, you know, somebody that doesn't mind having their name on the bottom saying, hey, I deal with XYZ trading company and they've always been good to me. Like, and that carries weight, you know? Yeah. I think that carries weight with other, with other people out there looking to sell items, you know? And that's, that's not going to, that's not going to deter some of the shady scrap people out there, you know, that are, you know, telling you they're going to ship you 80% brass and they load it with 50, you know? Yeah. Like as a trader, you have to kind of go through and vet some of those individuals as well. Right. And that's a whole different process. But I think that I feel like the trading community and I don't know, I'm kind of maybe speaking out of turn a little bit, but I feel like there's a lot more communication on that as well. Like, hey, watch out for so and so over in, you know, New Jersey, because they're 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 going to sell you a bill of goods right they're going to take some pictures of material and it's not going to be exactly what they said it was what it was you know yeah see i, I wish there were many many times that i wish i would have had that advice <laughs> when i was buying material <laughs> you know and and it, before it was uh, you know really everybody's keeping the cards close to their chest they're not they're not given unless they're, unless you're a good friend of theirs they're not going to tell you yeah you know, the suppliers and they're not going to tell you who the worst suppliers and, you know, that was kind of a wake up call for me back in like 2009 or so when I was a victim of fraud. And, you know, I, I lost a ton of money and I was reflecting on how the industry is. And, you know, I was talking to people about it. And one one uh, guy that I know said, well, you know, the problem is, it's like, to be honest with you, you know, if I'm your competitor and you go and deal with a bad supplier, hey, that's better for me because, the, you know, they're going to stitch you up like they did me and at least we're going to be even and maybe you go, maybe you go out of business. And I was like, ah, man, that's bad, man. I, I just, I, I know, yeah. and I, they, they say that's just business. You know, you got to be, you know, more shrewd and, you know, but I mean, no, that's, that's not okay, man. I, I think we got to watch out for each other a bit, you know, keep, we all need to help each other stay out of these problems, basically. Yeah. Well, and I think that's where you develop your network yeah. of, you know, traders that, like you said, like if I, I if I was to be a trader, I would look for other quality traders that made the that had great consumers for items I didn't, right? Right. And then I'd really just say, okay, like I know you're legit. You probably know which companies that you're dealing with are legit, but I have a good home for these three, four, five, six things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna focus on that home and focus on that material. Can you help me find people that might be suppliers of that material? Maybe not suppliers of um of what you're looking for but mm -hmm. then help kind of identify who those good uh processor producers are right yeah well tell us a little bit about about um i mean what i found interesting in our conversation that we've had so far um is that you know you you come from you you come from the old school but you're very new school in fact i even estimated your age about 10 years younger than what you actually are when i found out because that you're very you're a pretty millennial guy it seems you have a good a good grasp of technology and and and, the, and and social media um how are you leveraging everything social media like what kind of you know as yeah, in your normal business, I mean, you've got a TikTok channel, uh, you're, you're all over LinkedIn. That's how I got to know you actually from your LinkedIn following. I saw all of your posts and stuff. Maybe if you have some tips to share, what to, or maybe you can tell some stories about what's working for you that other people could, you know, that aren't familiar with like how to use social media could actually embrace that for their own businesses. I think the way I started on LinkedIn was just kind of telling our story of our company, right? And because it's something I knew, it was something that was genuine. It was something that, you know, I didn't have to pull any punches on. I was proud of our history, our heritage, where we came from and, you know, kind of. And then I just, I was, I just said, I'm pretty unafraid to post, you know, what's going on as far as, you know, if we wrecked a truck, I posted, here's, you know, we wrecked a truck this week and it was a shitty, it was a shitty week, right? Yeah. Um, if we had a great week, if something good happened, I wasn't afraid to post that. Um, but really it was just my, that was my way of communicating with people as I was trying to develop more opportunity for our business. I just said, 
I'm going to have to go out and, and maybe do and post stuff that maybe other might others might think is a little more, uh, you know, they're not willing to risk it or they're not willing to uh, take the, you know, the, they don't, they don't, they're afraid to post stuff that maybe makes them look like in a bad light for one or two people. But right. I think if you're just genuine and, uh, and it's work, like I think people get, get, get fooled by how much work it actually is to post and to communicate and on a daily basis. Right. right. Um, I, I mean, people ask me, so, who posts all the stuff out of, from your account, right? And I said, oh, I do. Like, anything that comes from my name, my account, like, that comes from me, from sitting in my chair with a cup of coffee or whatever. If it comes from me, like it says Brett Eckhart, that's okay. coming right out of my cell phone or my laptop, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, if it comes from United Metals or United Hauling, from our company accounts, we have people that are out there kind of helping us generate content to – produce it and to kind of to basically round out the narrative you know of what we're doing and communicate with the outside world of hey you, if you give us a chance to supply you with scrap or to supply you with transportation via our trucking company or pipe then you know here's what you can expect you know here's what you can expect from us and i i think it's almost holds makes you hold yourself accountable as well so mm -hmm. if i tell you i'm going to show up with xyz type of this truck or whatever or if i tell you that i'm going to send you this grade of material and i'm telling people who i'm sending it to then that's my way of keeping our guys our team accountable because i'm i'm pretty much putting my name on it right saying this is how it is and i don't want to be made to look uh, you know like i'm full of shit or you know not going to stand up to our end of the agreement um so it's kind of an accountability measure internally um, but also a way of getting, you know, just a small company out in Idaho, a little exposure to, you know, a huge industry nationwide and even bigger industry, you know, worldwide, um, and kind of a way to kind of solidify your place on the map or in the industry, um, by being willing to communicate, you know, your, your own story. So we got some construction outside. So oh, you know, I'll, I'll give you my perception on that. You know, uh, you know, I kept. You know, I'm I'm not a, a person. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Uh, we do a lot of posting, um, and um, but anytime I'm flipping through LinkedIn, I would see a post inevitably. You know, about United Metal. I mean, literally, man, they're all the time. Like, so what that does from an outsider's perspective, and I think everybody can understand this. You start seeing that story, that person, they're posting continuously. And you know, once you read an interesting piece of content, you see a picture, you know, and you see another picture and you start scanning it, you, it becomes that, that name United Metals Recycling, it, it becomes a, a thing in your mind that maybe you didn't know before. Like, I mean, I, I hadn't, I'd only heard of you and learned about you through social media. I've, not, mm -hmm. I've, I've only been to Idaho once as a nine year old kid. So, uh, but uh, I think it's really amazing, you know, just it takes, a, it does take time and effort, but I think what you said is really important that, you know, you just need to, you don't really need to hire a marketing company. You just need to be genuine, right? Just put your stuff out there and don't be, and, and don't make it all about just like, hey, look at all these great moments that we've had at our company. It's also, you know, people on social media like to hear a story. They want to know about the people, right? Yeah, that's, that's that's what I've seen work for you. And, and you've been like an example of what I've also learned, you know, from my marketing people about like how you get this thing going on, on social media. And I see your post a lot. So you really got that one, uh, hit that one right on. The and we have a yeah, we have a great team of people that are behind the scenes, you know, like one of the best things we ever did was every year we do a photo contest, intercompany photo contest. Right. Mm -hmm. So we basically. um at our company, we do a once a year company dinner, usually around the holidays. If you anybody can submit a photo or a video, right? If you're outside working and you're running the Cinnabogan or you're driving truck or whatever you're doing, you, you pull your truck over and you take a cool picture of the landscape with your truck in the background, or yeah. you know, the sun's rising and you're you know, you're crushing cars, you know, take a picture, you know. Yeah. Anything that is scrap related, truck related, pipe related, we allow everybody to submit photos, right? And we do a big annual photo contest. Cool. So we pay our guys, you know, like um, like the for the top five, ten pictures 
you know, we give them real money at the company dinner. But what that does is encourages them, A, to take pride in what they're doing, but B, it creates, it helps us generate content so we can show people what we're doing every day. Like from the angle of the people that are actually doing the work, you know? I mean, I can't drive around and take pictures of every single thing, every, what's going on, right? And neither can our, our guys in the background that are, you know, helping us create content for our social media. But the more pictures, the more content that's getting submitted, you know, about what's going on out there, it just helps everybody's cause. Um, that's cool. And I think and it kind of creates that camaraderie, you know, internally that it, that can benefit you from a culture standpoint, but also just from your social media standpoint and getting people kind of dialed in and thinking about, you know, how how to how to promote the, the, the positive things that you guys are doing every day. Yeah, that's really cool. What, what, what about? Yeah, that, that's a great tip because. Um, you know, uh, photos are, are the thing that really uh, spreads well on social media, right? People can look at them, like them. You know, this is what this is what this is what Facebook wants, what LinkedIn likes to have, and also original content. You know, like you said, like you, know, yeah. That they the these these you know, uh, I think Facebook. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing Facebook, LinkedIn. They're also looking to see out on the web, like, you know, Google image search. Did they get this from stock photo or is this something, you know, new? And, I, and I'm sure it does better. So uh, yeah. that's a real cool program that you've got or a little contest you've got internally. It's really awesome. Well, what about, are you active on Twitter? Any? You know, I, I just never really figured that one out. I've, yeah, I've okay. kind of looked at it and uh, <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's, I'm not, um, I'm not a, like a tech guru by any stretch, you know, um, I've got guys in our company that are really smart. that are that are good at some of that stuff that have kind of showed me the way and some of this stuff, mm-hmm. but really what I'm always doing is, you know, I feel like, like probably marketing is, is one of my stronger points. I'm not super mechanical. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's guys out there that could tear a diesel motor down today and rebuild that thing back in a few days. And they're just very mechanical. They understand the engineering side of stuff. And that's not my strong point. You know, my strong point is just looking at the market or the industry and just kind of saying, okay, and then trying to apply what maybe others are doing outside of, you know, our industries and trying to figure out how can I work those um, things that are working for other industries into what we're doing mm-hmm. to kind of help us build, build our business. Um, whether it's on the marketing side or whether it's on the, uh, you know, actual day-to-day business side. Um, so I think that's probably more my strong point is not necessarily being tech tech savvy as much as it's just being aware of my surroundings right? What's going on that's working out there? Um, and I think that's, that's what I'm always on the hunt for. I listen to a lot of podcasts, you know, I pay attention to what's, you know, what people are doing, um, you know, in other industries, just because mm-hmm. I wanted to, I'm like looking for, I don't want to call it, but arbitrage type opportunities, right? Where it's like, hey, we can do this here, right. and it can be effective. Um, and just like the what it, I heard it said one time, instead of defending your fortress, right? Defending your fort all day, mm-hmm. go out and try and put yourself out of business. Like what's the next, what's the next thing that's coming, you know, yeah. figure out how to get ahead of it, you know, and try it. I mean, shit, it may not work, but it might. And if it does, yeah. you're ahead, right? You, right. you kind of beat somebody else to the punch. And, uh, and I think that's, we're not afraid to try. We're not afraid to, to fail and go for it. Right. Yeah, that's super important, right? That's kind of the mo- the mantra of the startup, you know, world is basically, you know, uh, you know, fail, fail fast, fail hard, and uh, you know, so you want you want to get out there, you want to basically try everything you can, and you you want to have those failures, you know. And so basically, if you're not if you're sitting back and you're comfortable and you're not trying new things, um, well, you're never gonna really like you're never gonna innovate. I would say basically, right? Yeah. So, I started an auto auction. I was buying a lot of cars and I was like, dude, I'm going to start my own auto auction, right? So I started buying cars, piling them into inventory. And we had this great plan of, you know, we're going to, we, we got, we had the property, we ran the auto auction, and then we ran it like three times and it was just like an utter failure. Like, 
Okay. Talk about it, like losing money <laughs> real yeah. quick, you know, on cars. But so I take it you didn't buy those cars for scrap value. But some of them no, might have been enough to scrap. No, I was buying them at other auctions. <laughs> I was going to re-auction them, and I had this great idea, and it was going to work, and it was a terrible. It was a ter- it was a failure, yeah. right? But once it failed, we you know we ran it for a while. It sucked. It was a money loser. We moved on, and we yeah. owned it. We said, "Yep." Yeah, you know, yep. it seemed like a good idea at the time, right. but it, you know, it didn't work out, right? And I think that's us in a nutshell. Like for every win we've had, you know, we, we I think we've had it, you know, a couple of failures along the way. So, yeah. Um, but we're just we're we're still steadfast in our willingness to just try. Yeah, awesome. And social media and marketing is the same thing, right? Yeah. I think where people get hung up is if you make a video today, right? And, and let's say it sucks. Like tomorrow, nobody's going to care about that. They remember that video. That's like, true. They already forgot about you. Like make another yeah. one, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. unless it's something, you know, something just crude or racist or something that, yeah. you know, gets you a bunch of unwanted un- attention you weren't looking for, sure. you know? But I mean, if you make a good video today, like, great but you better make a better one tomorrow or another one right. tomorrow because they already forgot about the one you made yesterday or Even the post you one. made yesterday <laughs> yeah you gotta you gotta i mean it's you gotta keep going and you gotta yeah. you know it's a different keep, world keep a, yeah. yeah it's it's new it's more it's just marketing right it's it's branding and if your brand is your reputation you know people think of united metals i want them to think like hey we're not the biggest recycling company nor do i have any desire to be some huge recycling company i just want to be the best at what i do where i'm at in the industries i'm in and i just and i'm not and i'm willing to go hard at my little niche you know and and i think that's that's all i ever want to communicate is i'm never going to be a sims or a you know a schnitzer or one of these huge you know, companies that's worldwide or, you know, coast to coast. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in our certain industries, you know, and I'm, but, but we, one thing that we are going to be is the best in our area at doing what we do. And I think that's, that's the way we look at it. That's awesome. That's awesome, Brett. Well, man, uh, listen, I, pr- I appreciate your time. This has been uh, really uh, interesting to uh, have a talk with you, have a chat with you. I appreciate you being the first person on our podcast series. Yeah, man, way, I appreciate the opportunity. That, that's Everybody should know that this is, uh, I take my inspiration from Brett's podcast. If you haven't checked it out, Scrap Life, it's quite interesting, cool. But you want to maybe summarize what you're after with the Scrap Life uh, for everyone? You know, I started a scrap life. I mean, I, to be, I had the first podcast I started was uh, I had bought a pipe reline company in Indiana. And so we were trying to bring awareness to that business. And so we started um, interviewing individuals that were in the reline industry and which was great. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, we have a pipe company. I'm interested in that world, but my real passion was scrap. Right. So it was kind of my way of learning how to do a podcast and how to, interview people and it's kind of my way of trial and error good and so i always knew i was going to do a uh, um scrap podcast but i wanted it to be um about people in the industry that were like passionate about the industry right, right. i wanted it to be with people that you know came from nothing and they just scratched their way and built a business or they built a career you know We've interviewed people in our, in our, in just in our company that started at the bottom, right? Guys that started running cans for, they ran, I got a, you know, a guy that handles all the marketing, all the purchasing for our company. He ran cans for two years, fucking aluminum cans, nasty beer, dead animals in those cans for two years and just worked his way up. Right. And Dude, that guy, I've talked about somebody that has like, that's just a scrappy individual. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the evolution of the podcast for me down the road is just individuals who are just scrappy. Like they're just gritty, tough. They're, they, they take chances. Sometimes they fail. Sometimes they win. But right now it's just basically, it's, I like having people on there that, they got the good old rust in their veins and they're just, <laughs> they're just hard, you know, like they're just, 
females, males, like they just go hard and they, uh, and they, and, and they, they love the industry as much as I do. 